Alright, so I have a confession to make, and I'm not too sure how to say it, but here it goes. I'm dumb! Wait, what? What do you mean you already knew that? I don't have to stand for this! I- It's not easy being dumb. Believe me. So, I'm going to become smart the only way I know how. By playing video games. More specifically today, games on this personal computer. What do the kids call it these days? A PC? I've heard this thing is great for playing games. Heck, I even have a vague memory of playing this game where you caught elves with a net. Yeah, it's uh, not as good as I remember. So please, join me today in our adventure to become smarter -er -er -er. This is gonna be a long day. McDonald's! Where is this going? McDonald's taught me a lot during my adult days, mainly that nothing is better than a cheeseburger at 2 a.m. Apparently, however, in the 90s, they wanted to teach you more than that with Adventures Through McDonald's Land. Welcome to my party, yeah, we're gonna have a ball. All my happy friends are here, so let's go meet them all. I immediately regret this. Man, why did this intro have to be so terrifying? CG in the 90s was not very good. Like, at all. Also, Ronald McDonald is Australian? Why didn't anyone tell me? Hi, I'm Ronald McDonald, the world famous magical clown. Ugh. So this is Ronald's first PC game. It's okay, man, everyone's first time isn't good. So, in the 90s, there was actually a McDonald's cinematic universe, full of locations and characters like Grimace, The Hamburglar, and Talking Chicken Nuggets. Don't question it. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's play the game! Welcome to the castle of Sir Ronald! Hello! I'm Princess Birdie! Oh, I wish a brave knight would rescue me! Okay, first game is Dress Up. McDonald's Tea Posing Dress Up. It's of course super easy since this is a game made for children. Next up, we enter a castle and play hide and seek. Ooh. Yeah, I hate this game. Chicken Nuggets showing up just to scar me for life? Seriously, there's no point to that! It leads to nothing! Betrayed by a Chicken Nugget! I knew it would come to this! So we find a secret door literally by just clicking it, and we're given a puzzle to solve. We need to drag these balls on their set path to the end. Sounds difficult on paper, until you realize that it's literally just this toy. Yeah, that. What are they called? Bead mazes. Really? Now you learn something new every day. Anyway, we finally find the bird girl and need to select a key to save her. Which one exactly? Well... You literally pick them at random until it's like, all right, this is the key, I guess. This isn't educational, it's just random. This game is awful. The rest of it follows a similar formula. You hear Ozzy Ronald McDonald talk. It's off to the cave. You get nightmare CGI and then randomly click until you win. Wake up, Australia. This is a great moment as the yacht Australia 2 is about to cross the finish line. There was another McDonald's PC game, if you can believe it. Mission to McDonald Land. Greetings, Ronald. My name is Astor. I am from the planet McMars. Still don't like that. This game doesn't have a story unlike the previous McDonald's game and just focuses on minigames. For example, throwing a burger at Grimace. Oh boy. That's just gonna give you a cramp. Don't eat and jump! Next game has three plates, and only one has a Happy Meal under it. Which one? Does it show it to us and then mix it around? Of course not! You just have to randomly pick a plate and see if you got it right. Why even mix them up? I don't know which plate has the Happy Meal! Ta-da! Enjoy your McHappy Meal. You've earned it. It doesn't even come with a toy, but instead more nightmare eyes. I am this close to going to Burger King. I'll play one more game on this before I head to McDonald's, because I'm getting hungry. This marketing thing is working. So, okay, we go through each month on the calendar and click on the days that are in red. These are holidays and days where special events happen. And of course, we get to learn about them. 
Important events like when the sandwich was invented. And I am the fourth Earl of Sandwich. Don't laugh. Sandwich is the name of a lovely town in England. But since this is also an Australian game for some reason, we get Australian holidays. I am now part Australian. McDonald's made me this way. Sesame Street is a series that is, at its core, educational. Elmo and Cookie Monster were always my favorite. No real reason why you needed to know, but I just wanted to say that. So any games involving Sesame Street are bound to be educational and potentially help make me a smart. So let's check some of them out. Sesame Street Learn, Play, and Grow Preschool. Am I really about to poke fun at a game made for preschoolers? Of course I am! So our first game is to identify this color with Big Bird. Oh, that's a pretty color. Let's find out which color it is. Purple. Alright. I don't know what I expected. Big Bird asks you what color it is, but there's no option to choose. You just click on the color and it tells you. Why are you asking me what color it is, Big Bird? You obviously know! Elmo eventually shows up, however, and puts our color knowledge to the test. Find the color... orange! No one told me there'd be a test! Oh, yeah! That's pretty much the entire game. Different characters from the show come up and essentially play the same game. They'll be like, what shape is this? And then you have to choose. A little too easy for me. I'm ready for the next class, one that's more advanced. Elmo's Reading Basics. Ed. Ed. <laughs> anyway, in this game, you're given the end of three words that have similar sounds, and it's your job to match up the first part of the letters with the image. Ba. Bed. It's literally as simple as that. Me, Emperor Cookies! I mean, what do you want me to say? I'm talking about a game meant for kids who aren't even in school yet. There is a segment at the end of the game where you essentially play Mad Libs. You have to look at this image and select the correct words to finish the sentence. However, it's much more fun if you get it wrong. The cow is on the eggs. The sun is on the log. <laughs> This is literally what I was like in school. I paid no attention to the actual work and just daydreamed and messed around. Don't be me, kids. Actually try. Sonic the Hedgehog. Now, I've already talked about Sonic's schoolhouse in a previous video, but what I haven't talked about yet was Sonic the Hedgehog's game world on the Sega Pico. Yeah, the Sega Pico was an educational toy made by Sega. It was a working video game console with a surprisingly big library of games on it. But is it really fair to call this thing a PC? Well, it flips open like a laptop. There's kind of a keyboard here, and the stylus acts as the mouse. So yes, this is a gamer PC for children. So here's Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World. There's honestly a good variety of games on this thing, but we're only here for the knowledge! But, for the sake of completion, let's quickly go through the non-educational games. Hoops! Basketball hoops with feet walk around and you need to shoot basketballs into them. It's weird and unnatural. Skee-ball! It's skee-ball. Racing! Imagine controlling a racing game with this! Nuff said. Release your pent-up anger with Wacko Robotnik! All right, let's calm down a bit. I'm not that angry. Crane machines. I won a big Kirby from one, so that's cool. All right, now we've reached the educational portions. This one tests your reaction time. Robotnik holds up a flag and you need to quickly hit the button of the color he raises. You gotta go fast for this one. Oh my gosh, it all makes sense. Then out of nowhere, the game starts having dialogue. Do you like my mustache? I just met you, man. You're coming off a little too strong. And yes, by the way, I do. Sonic is a hedgehog. All right, listen here, you blue bunny. It would take a big old stupid idiot to not know that Sonic the Hedgehog is a hedgehog. I'm dumb, but I'm not that dumb. Looking back on my childhood, though, I do remember some educational game on my computer. One involving a talking car. I bet this is going to be a great day. 
Holy crap, it's Putt-Putt! A talking car going on adventures. Although, I don't remember which one I played as a kid. I vaguely remember seeing Putt-Putt in space, so... I guess it was Putt-Putt goes to the moon. Careful not to touch that lever! It's for my big secret experiment! Wow! These games are weird, man. You essentially travel the world of talking cars and... do chores. Yeah, chores! People need you to do stuff for them! Like, excuse you, how do you expect me to help? I'm a car just like you! I have no arms! These people are jerks, man! No wonder Putt-Putt wants to go to the moon! And you know what happens when you get there? You know what your space adventure consists of? DOING MORE CHORES FOR PEOPLE! Like, you're not even a car! You're more capable of doing this than I am! Even space aliens are dicks. Despite the chores, the game is still a blast, featuring a beloved educational icon in Putt-Putt with his dog. When playing this game, I feel like I... actually learn stuff. Oh my gosh! Mission complete! I finally learned something! Oh man, I feel so smart! I'm gonna go apply to NASA right now! <laughs> yeah, on the way there, I realized that the games I played were meant for six-year-olds, and that I'm actually not that smart. But hey, book smarts aren't everything. Just be a good person in this world. Do what you can, when you can, and that's all that really matters. Well, that and Taco Bell. That's right, Australian Ronald McDonald! I've betrayed you!